All right, guys, we are finally here. The 1964 Volkswagen Beetle giveaway is now live. Just like the last giveaway for the 924S, I have once again decided to crawl into the trenches with you guys and make all of the merchandise available for this giveaway myself here in the shop. I am once again going to be doing a custom keyring for this giveaway that you can purchase at ludwigsgarage.com and read all the official rules for the giveaway. I was a little hesitant to make all of the merchandise myself again because just like the last one, I was working day and night getting all of your keyrings made and shipped out to you. I do all of the order fulfillment here myself as well. These keyrings are made from 1 16th inch thick two color acrylic. They are laser cut and laser engraved right here in the shop. I'm doing five different color options in these key rings. There's a black that engraves white, a white that engraves black, a brushed gold and black, a port wine in gold, which is probably one of my favorites, but definitely my favorite is a light blue that engraves white. Each one is hand finished and hand assembled. I laser cut a genuine leather strap that binds the acrylic piece to the split ring and hand rivet each one. Just like the last giveaway, this one is limited. It's only going to be live for two weeks. From today, Thursday, March 21st, to Thursday, April 4th, this giveaway will only be live for 14 days. So head to ludwigsgarage.com right now, the link is in the video's description below, to get entered to win the 64 Beetle. All right, guys, so most of this episode is going to be talking about the 64 Beetle. If you haven't seen the whole series leading up to this point of what we've done to this car, but while we do that, I'm gonna run some errands and I think I'm gonna take the Beetle. So we'll drive it for a little bit today. Okay, so I should have filmed this. I say that all the time. But my buddy Sam Bunker swung by yesterday and we were talking about this car and a lot of you guys were real helpful in the comments in the last video about the shifter adjustment. Sam swung by and said, well, have you tried calibrating it? Like aligning it. And I said, no, not really, not up front. He said, well, just loosen up the two 13 mil bolts on the base plate of the shifter and with them loose, put the car into reverse and then snug the bolts up and that's aligning it. And I'd never heard this before. Although I do have a lot of air-cooled cars here. It's my first Beetle and the first time I've heard of this. So what I didn't film was I just did that. I loosened up the two 13 mil bolts here, got it so that base plate was a little loose. And then with it loose, push down, and shifted it over in the reverse, snug them back up. And now, literally no problem. Totally fixed. From neutral to first gear was never that easy, ever. Neutral, first gear. We're gonna put it to the test now that we're about to drive it, but sitting still was when it was the most difficult to get it in first gear. Seriously love how easy this car starts. Love it. It is quite cold today, but I'm used to driving my Corvair and BMW 700. Back home in New Hampshire. Relax. In the fall and in the spring and sometimes in the winter, boy, I think it was in the first gear so much nicer now. All right, so most of you guys know the deal about this car. Most of you have seen the series here on the channel. It's a 1964. It's the last year of the small window Beetles. So if it can't be a splitty and it can't be an oval, a small window pre-65 Beetle is it for me. All right, so what I think we're going to do next is get things moved around here in the yard. We'll get the OBS started up and we'll get hooked on to the 24 foot enclosed trailer. And now that I don't have my second Auto Union 1000 SP sitting in here, because that's gone now, I'm gonna pull this thing out and we're gonna check to see if the BMW 700 and the Beetle can fit inside my single car 
24 foot trailer. We have some iffy weather coming this weekend in Atlanta for Import Alliance. And rather than take the open trailer, which we do know the Beetle and the 700 will both fit on safely, I don't want to run the risk of having my tent bag, my totes, and all my merchandise not secure in the open bed of my truck, both for the drive and being able to secure things, but also in case it rains and stuff gets wet. If you guys have been on the channel for a few years, you'll remember that when I moved here to Chattanooga, Tennessee from central New Hampshire, about a thousand miles north, I did have a German market Volkswagen 2F Polo that I had just bagged. I went through a whole build series on this channel with that car. And when I moved here, the Polo in the 700 fit in here. And I have a hard time believing that a 2F Mark II Polo is that much smaller than a Beetle. I'm not sure. The Beetle is probably longer than a 2F Polo. I haven't looked online yet, but since we have the cars here and we have the trailer here, we'll just pull them in and we'll take a look. Drop your wagers down in the comments below now. Is a Volkswagen Beetle longer than a 2F Polo? I, th I think it might be. That'd be another really cool hack if the 24 foot enclosed trailer can house two of my small cars. OEM 1995 keyless entry that still works. This was a baller move in 1995. I can't believe my power stroke still has it and it still works. Took a little bit longer today since it's in the 30s. I like it. Second keyless entry pre-Y2K car. Although technically this is a Y2K car since it's a 2000. Yeah, buddy. All right, so still playing musical cars, and wouldn't you know it, when it rains, it pours. You can probably hear that leak. Those are two brand new tires on the back of the Corvair on those Epsilons, and I've been too stubborn to buy yet two more brand new tires, and I've plugged this one like four times. Just did the starter solenoid in the last episode, got this thing back out on the road, was super excited to be driving it again, and literally as soon as I pulled it in the shop and ended the last episode, that plug failed and now we have a flat. I always get stoked when I pull this trailer out because I don't pull it out often anymore. And a lot of that is because I bought the open trailer. This was my first trailer I ever bought. And being an enclosed trailer, man, it was a good feeling. The trailer is empty and we got it swept out. Yeah, it took some time to just move everything out and give it a good sweeping. Haven't really cleaned this thing in a while. All right, we pulled the 700 in, got it pretty straight first go. And we have a few inches of forgiveness, because obviously the car will move and as the trailer moves going down the road. And that's right where the front wheel chocks are. So we're butted up against the chalk on both front tires. And we've got our two front D-rings, so we'll secure from the front beam. It feels like there's enough room. So keep your fingers crossed. 
We'll load the beetle. I mean, look at how much space that is. All right, guys, we are so close. Oh, bumper still has a good 10 inches to go. And up front, we have about the same amount of distance. I bet we could go forward enough to get it inside. I don't want them touching. I don't want them close enough to touch it. That's as close as I want to get. I I think we can close the door. Oh boy. I don't think the door's touching the bumper. Well, let's go take a look. All right, let's take a look here. We're tight, but doable. We are not touching the door. Wow. Well, they fit. The Volkswagen Beetle and a BMW 700 will fit inside a 24 foot Vino's enclosed trailer. Well, that's a huge win for the plans for getting down to Atlanta for Import Alliance this weekend. Definitely need to clean it. This thing has been sitting far too long. Got to pressure wash it, clean it up. Just a few moments ago, the BMW 700 shirts just showed up. So we're going to have another batch of these for you guys this weekend at Import Alliance. But I only had my buddy Dustin Williams make 35 of these. So first come, first serve this weekend at Import Alliance Atlanta. All right, so my buddy Sam's here, and he offered to take a look at the headlights on the W210. So a lot of you guys have been on me every episode you see the 210 about how bad the headlights are. I know. And every time Sam came by, <laughs> he's like, you know, I can bang that up for you in like 10 minutes. And my plan has been to do it. But you guys know I've got so much going on. This on the Daily Driver was just back burner of all the back burners. But Sam's been coming by and I did, by the way, sort that shifter out. That was, a, that was a really good, really good Easter egg of advice there because that thing is perfect now. Never would have known. Yeah, I just put it in reverse. <laughs> Loosen the balls, put it in reverse, work perfect. But yeah, so Sam owns owns a detail shop. It's detail work. Yep. Detail yep. work with an E. And you're based out of Hickson, right? Yeah. Right close shop by. Yeah, right here in Hickson. What do you do most of? Ceramic coating? I pretty much do volume wholesale. And then what I enjoy to do is like ceramics, headlights, paint correction, pretty much anything like that. But my day to day is basically just grinding them out. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. Interior, washing waxes. But when I get an opportunity to do something like cool, I jump at it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is cool, but the car is kind of cool. Yeah, the car is cool. <laughs> we were talking air-cooled stuff because he's got a handful of air-cooled cars, some really cool air-cooled cars, and had a few pieces of advice on that Beetle, but also saw the headlights. He was picking up one of the BMW 700 shirts. He's like, I'll just bring some stuff and bang those headlights out real quick. So I am so stoked because that is like the last piece of the exterior puzzle on this car, really, to like, other than a paint correction. <laughs> Looks like a whole new car. <laughs> Dude, I appreciate you coming by. And, I mean, what are you, like what, 20 minutes? Yeah, it brings the car back. Yeah, it really does. 
Well, another huge thanks to my friend Sam from Detail Work for coming over and taking care of these lights. The headlights can diminish the whole overall aesthetic of the car. So super thankful Sam was able to come over and buff those things out. As Sam did mention, we're not gonna coat them yet because I do plan on having Sam do a whole bunch of paint correction on this car and really bring this thing back to life. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for this episode. I've gotta finish getting ready for Import Alliance Atlanta this weekend. We're loading the trailer up tomorrow, so I've got a long night of editing this tonight but make sure to get to ludwigsgarage.com and get entered to win the 64 beetle i want to give another huge thanks to my friends at everesto in england for being such a huge part of this project as well as a few other projects currently in the shop so go support them if you've got any air-cooled volkswagens that need lowering or any sort of aftermarket bits their link is in the video's description below if you're in the southeast area come out to import alliance atlanta i'll have some exclusive merchandise with me at the ludwigs garage booth we'll also have the 64 beetle if you want to come take a look if you get a keyring to get entered you can come see the car in person we'll have the bmw 700 there as well so i'm super excited to have a couple of the patinaed cars there so i hope to see some of you guys this weekend and if not i hope to see you guys in the next episode